The Airbus A220, celebrated for its fuel efficiency and passenger comfort, a revolution in air travel with modern design, lightweight materials, advanced cockpit, and comfortable seating, is coming to a dead end. What's wrong? Why Airbus might say goodbye to A220? Let's find out in this episode of Flagavia, but before we start, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so you'll be the first to see our next videos. Now, let's dive in. To understand the current and future prospects of the Airbus A220, we need to delve into its origin story. Contrary to what many might assume, Airbus did not originally design this aircraft. The A220 was conceived by Bombardier in Canada in an effort to address a specific gap in the market for narrow-body aircraft. Around two decades ago, Bombardier noticed a significant trend in the aircraft market. Both Boeing and Airbus were developing narrow-body aircraft that were steadily increasing in size. While the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320 families included smaller variants, these designs were typically optimized for the larger versions, making the smaller variants heavier and less efficient for their passenger capacity. Examples include the Boeing 737-600 and 700 and the Airbus A318 and 319. Concurrently, other smaller aircraft types were either being phased out or had already ceased production. For instance, the Boeing 717, the last member of the MD-80 family, went out of production in 2006, and the Fokker 100 and Avro RJ, though still in service, were no longer being manufactured. Recognizing this gap, Bombardier's engineers believed they could create an aircraft that was more than just a short haul or regional jet by incorporating the latest engine technology and maximizing efficiency. The goal was to produce a plane that could connect medium-sized and smaller commercial airports, fitting well with the point-to-point -point model, which was gradually gaining popularity over the hub and spoke model. Despite the innovative approach, the C-Series, as it was initially known, was misunderstood. Bombardier, primarily known for business jets, turboprops, and regional aircraft, was not seen as a serious contender by industry giants like Boeing and Airbus. Consequently, the C-Series was dismissed as just an overgrown regional jet. One of the significant hurdles was finding the right engine. After extensive research, Bombardier partnered with Pratt & Whitney to use a version of the PW-1000G geared turbofan family, the PW-1500G. Officially launched at the Farnborough Air Show in 2008, the C-Series program faced numerous challenges, including an unrealistic budget. Bombardier initially estimated that developing the C-Series would cost around $2.1 billion, with costs shared by the supporting governments, including Canada, Quebec, and the UK. However, development costs quickly escalated, and by 2009, the projection had risen to approximately $3.5 billion. Despite additional state funding, by the time the plane was certified in 2015, development costs had soared to $5.4 billion. Further investments in production infrastructure and government support raised the total program cost to $7 billion by 2020. In 2018, Airbus took over the C-Series program, renaming it the Airbus A220. This acquisition marked a significant turning point, bringing Airbus resources and expertise into play. The A220 soon gained market traction and was recognized as a successful aircraft, especially after early engine-related issues were resolved. However, despite its operational success and customer satisfaction, Airbus continues to produce the A220 at a loss. There were several factors that contributed to the ongoing financial losses associated with the A220. Firstly, Bombardier, lacking extensive experience in building large aircraft, faced production inefficiencies. Unlike Boeing, which utilizes pre-stuffing techniques at Spirit Aerosystems to streamline final assembly, Bombardier's production processes were slower and more cumbersome. Airbus only began implementing similar efficiencies for the A220 in 2021. Furthermore, as a smaller manufacturer, Bombardier did not have the leverage to negotiate favorable parts supplier contracts like Airbus and Boeing. Consequently, many parts were more expensive than they would have been if Airbus had negotiated the contracts. Addressing these supply chain issues has taken considerable time and effort since Airbus took over the program. Additionally, the A220's North American design and supply chain present logistical challenges for Airbus, a European company. Despite all these issues, the Airbus A220 remains a more efficient aircraft than any of the smaller Boeing or Airbus models currently available. The larger A22300 is even capturing some sales from the Airbus A320neo. 
Bombardier initially designed this plane with a potential future stretch in mind, which would align it more closely with the Airbus A320neo and Boeing 737 MAX 8. So, if the A220 is superior to existing models, why might it be considered a dead end? The answer lies in several developmental problems, emerging aircraft production methods, and Airbus's overall strategy, which could significantly impact the long-term viability of this design. To understand why the A220's position in the Airbus lineup is uncertain, we need to examine how Airbus currently manufactures the A220 compared to the A320. Airbus uses various aerostructure manufacturing sites across Europe to produce different parts of their aircraft, with most of the major structural components for the A320 family made in Europe. These parts are then transported to one of Airbus's many final assembly lines to be assembled into a complete aircraft which is generally efficient. However, the A220 is different in both origin and scale. Initially produced at Bombardier's Mirabel facility in Quebec, where the main production still occurs, occurs, a second final assembly line has been established in Alabama. Combined, these two sites have the capacity to produce around 14 A220s per month, but actual production has yet to reach this rate. Besides, there are additional profitability issues, including Boeing's interest in reacquiring Spirit Aerosystems, which owns the Belfast factory that makes the A220's wings. Airbus does not want Boeing to control this factory, and Boeing, aiming to reintegrate Spirit at a low cost, doesn't want an Airbus wing factory either. Consequently, Airbus and Boeing must negotiate how to divide Spirit Aerosystems. This situation is complex. Airbus, recognizing that buying the Belfast factory would reduce Spirit's purchase price for Boeing, now seeks compensation for taking over the facility, requiring around $1 billion in additional investments to break even. This complicates Airbus's longer-term goal of producing over 20 A220s per month. Meanwhile, Airbus plans to manufacture about 75 A320 family aircraft monthly across numerous final assembly lines worldwide, which might make Airbus hesitant to let the A220 overshadow A320 Neo sales, despite the latter being produced as rapidly as possible. The entire Airbus supply and production infrastructure revolves around the A320neo family. However, it's not just the production infrastructure for the A320neo that threatens the A220's future. As you may have known, Airbus has evolved its entire fleet to facilitate customer training and maintenance across different aircraft types. Typically, each airliner family requires a specific pilot type rating. However, Airbus has designed their cockpits and systems to be very similar across models, allowing for abbreviated type ratings and easier transitions between types, like moving from the A320 to the larger A330. This cross-crew qualification process takes less than a week compared to the full type rating, which can take around two months. Airbus has meticulously ensured that all aircraft since the A320, including the A330, A340, A350, and A380 families, share similarities in their design and systems. This strategy offers significant benefits to airlines operating multiple Airbus types and strengthens their loyalty to Airbus fleets. Some airlines have even implemented mixed fleet flying procedures, allowing pilots to fly both the A320 and A380 families, which is quite advantageous. However, not all airlines frequently switch pilots between types, but the capability and reduced training time for transitions offer substantial savings. And unfortunately, A220 doesn't fit into this process. Despite using fly-by-wire technology and a side stick like the rest of the Airbus fleet, the A220 is a completely different aircraft design with its own systems and a separate type rating. This design choice made sense when Bombardier developed it, as they had no reason to align with Airbus's type ratings. As a result, the A220 stands somewhat isolated in the Airbus ecosystem. Considering the potential future development of the A220 family, Bombardier initially designed the plane with the possibility of a fuselage stretch in mind, although this would require more powerful engines. Assuming the suitable engines can be found, Airbus could launch the stretch model once A220 production becomes profitable. However, commonality issues and long-term fleet plans might hinder further development. Both Airbus and Boeing plan to introduce new airliners around the middle of the next decade, driven by emerging engine technologies like the CFM Rise. This new aircraft will likely be the first in a completely new family, designed to be compatible with existing and future aircraft systems. And given this, it's unlikely Airbus would choose the A220 design over their established A320, A330, A340, and A380 models, considering the large number of these aircraft in service and the many pilots already trained on them. So why wouldn't Airbus pursue a stretched A220, especially if much of the design work is already done? Well, another factor is the cost and speed of developing new aircraft. 
Currently, developing a new airliner takes about seven years, assuming everything goes smoothly. Both Boeing and Airbus are working to shorten this time using advanced digital design tools and cost-efficient production methods like out-of-autoclave manufacturing. These improvements aim to make new aircraft cheaper and quicker to produce, allowing manufacturers to respond more flexibly to demand. If Airbus and Boeing succeed in these efforts, they could introduce new super-efficient aircraft much faster and at a lower cost. This raises the question of whether a stretched A220 would be worth the investment, or if Airbus should focus on an entirely new design aligned with their existing fleet. There are many uncertainties, and other factors could influence Airbus's decision. Both Boeing and Airbus are developing new aircraft to suit the CFM Rise engine, expected to enter service in about a decade. Fast development or not, new aircraft are coming, and whether Airbus will need a stretched A220 depends on how quickly it becomes profitable and if Boeing forces Airbus's hand by launching a new aircraft sooner. If Boeing turns its fortunes around and introduces a new aircraft quickly, Airbus might have to react and a stretched A to the 20th of May not be the best answer. So what do you think about this? Please let us know in the comments section and don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it.